Hi, I'm Dr. David Rowicher. I'm one of the Legacy Heart Center cardiologists, and I'm also the director of the Congestive Heart Failure Center at the Center for Advanced Cardiovascular Care at the Heart Hospital Baylor Plano. And I want to take a few minutes to talk about congestive heart failure. Congestive heart failure is a constellation of symptoms. It's not a one single diagnosis. It's most often known as causing shortness of breath, but it can cause swelling in your legs, swelling in your abdomen. It can cause fatigue and cough. Sometimes patients describe difficulty laying down or even waking up at night, short of breath. Because it's a constellation of symptoms, sometimes it's difficult to diagnose. And that's where your relationship with your doctor comes in. Because your doctor can perform certain tests, certain blood tests, x-rays, EKG, listen to your heart and your lungs to determine if this is a problem that's affecting you. There are certain blood tests like a BNP, which stands for brain natriuretic peptide, which ironically has nothing to do with your brain, but is a protein that we can measure in your blood that can tell us how your heart is doing and how much extra fluid you have in your body. We can do x-rays to see if you have fluid on your lungs. Most importantly, we can do a test called a cardiac ultrasound. You might have heard it referred to as an echocardiogram. And this will tell us about your heart structure and your heart function, tells us how strong your heart is and if you have heart valve problems. It also will tell us if the pressures inside your heart are normal. And that can help us figure it out because the symptoms are sometimes hard to track down. And sometimes it's hard to tell is it one problem or another because heart failure can sometimes be manifest as confusion, difficulty sleeping, which can have a lot of similarities to other problems. It turns out that heart failure is a very important issue. It's important because it can have a dramatic impact on patients' quality of lives. And the numbers are really astounding. It turns out that about 6 million Americans have congestive heart failure. Of that, there's a million hospitalizations per year for congestive heart failure. And if you're hospitalized for congestive heart failure, you might be back in the hospital 25% of the time within one month and 50% of the time within six months. So obviously a very dramatic impact on quality of life. It turns out that it's Medicare's biggest expense, and it costs our society $21 billion per year on treating heart failure patients alone. So there's a lot of interest in engaging physicians, engaging hospitals, and engaging patients in trying to help you live better and feel better and treat this disease. And the good news is that there are a lot of very effective treatments for congestive heart failure those patients who have shortness of breath when they walk around on routine daily activities. For people who have minor shortness of breath all the way to those extremes of shortness of breath where someone has um, shortness of breath when they take a shower, when they get dressed, when they go to walk around a grocery store. What's important too is to understand that because congestive heart failure is a group of symptoms and not a specific diagnosis, there can be lots of types of congestive heart failure. Sometimes it can come from heart rhythm problems. Sometimes it can come from heart valve problems. Sometimes it can come because the heart doesn't relax normally. And then of course, most traditionally, it's because the heart muscle has been weakened. Weakened by heart attacks, weakened by a virus, or sometimes weakened by other factors that we can't even easily identify. And when you break it down, it turns out that it's a very small amount of patients who have heart valve and heart rhythm problems. Most patients either have too strong a heart that doesn't relax normally, or too weak a heart. It's about 50-50 between those two. And knowing the type of heart failure that you have or knowing what's causing it is really paramount because it helps us figure out what the best treatment strategy will be. If you're having heart rhythm problems causing congestive heart failure, the best thing to do is to try to get those heart rhythms fixed. If it's heart valve problems causing congestive heart failure, then fixing the heart valves, either surgically or now we can do it through a catheter, will help improve your symptoms and treat the congestive heart failure. For those patients who have a problem with their heart relaxing, it's called diastolic dysfunction, or some people call it congestive heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. If you have a strong heart that doesn't relax normally, it's a very difficult kind of congestive heart failure to treat. We focus a lot on lifestyle modification. We focus a lot on treating your blood pressure and getting rid of the extra fluid on your body. For those patients who have the most traditional kind of congestive heart failure from a weak heart muscle, there's a lot we can do to help treat those patients. Again, it requires a partnership between the physician, the family, and the patient to try to do that. But there are medications we can use, there are devices we can use, 
and there are advanced forms of heart failure therapy. Treatment starts with you. For every patient who has congestive heart failure, there are certain things that you can do that will help you feel better. The first one is limit salt. Salt is the enemy. It will make you retain fluid every time you eat salt. And the guidelines that we try to use are less than 2,000 milligrams of salt a day, which is hard to judge, so read labels. We're trying to have, oh, 400 milligrams per serving or so. And try to limit the amount of fluid that you intake too, because everything that goes in goes somewhere. We don't want it to go into your legs or into your abdomen or into your lungs. Try to keep your fluid intake to less than a liter and a half a day. So that's hard to judge. It's roughly six cups of water or six cups of fluid per day. And remember, the fluid in your food counts. So if you have fluid in your food, like uh, fruit would have a lot of fluid in it, um, if you have ice cream or if you have jello or even routine foods that may have a lot of sort of water in them, like soup, those would count as fluid for the day. Try to keep it less than 1.5 liters or around there. And then check your body weight. If your weight is going up, that can be a clue that you're starting to retain fluid. And call your doctor. It's easy to treat things early on. If you call when you're very short of breath, your weight has gone way up and you're very swollen, then it's much harder to treat. So call your doctor and communicate regularly. For those patients who have any of the kinds of heart failure that we talked about, there are certain medications that can help your heart beat stronger and help you feel better too. The first of those are diuretics. Some people call them water pills. And the water pills or diuretics will help get the extra fluid off your body. Oftentimes we'll prescribe a certain amount to take every day and that'll be sort of the baseline amount that you're taking. But if your weight goes up, if you feel more short of breath, if you become swollen, you may end up taking extra doses at times. Call your doctor and have a plan, but over time patients get good at this. They become experts about themselves. We'll be the experts about heart failure and you'll know yourself like no one else. And Sometimes it's body weight, sometimes it's shortness of breath, but I have patients who have different signs that they're retaining fluid too. Sometimes their hands are stiff or sometimes their belly gets more full. And for those patients, we come up with a treatment strategy to take extra doses of diuretics. They know when to take it and they take it early so that it doesn't progress so far that it's hard to treat. When your heart muscle is weak, your body makes certain hormones like renin, angiotensin, aldosterone, uh, adrenaline, and those hormones you can think of as a group of neurohormones. Those hormones initially help the heart beat a little stronger and they make your blood vessels constrict, raise your blood pressure. So for a little while, that can help you feel compensated. But over time, those very high levels of hormones are hard on the heart. It's kind of over the engine. They're hard on the heart. They don't allow it to get stronger and they don't allow it to heal. And what your doctor will do is prescribe certain medications and they will be called blood pressure medications. If you look them up in a drug reference manual, it'll say for blood pressure. But the reality is, is that those medications will block those hormones, those hormones that aren't allowing your heart to heal. And they will block those hormones and allow your heart to rest and allow your heart to heal. Those medications will be beta blockers like metoprol succinate and carvedilol. Those medications will be ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers like lisinopril and losartan. There are many others. And it will include medicines that are mineral corticoid receptor antagonists. Don't worry about the name. But medicines like spironolactone and Inspira that also will help strengthen your heart muscle. So don't be frustrated. If every time you come to see me, I increase the dose. Because what I want to do is start with a very low dose so I don't get side effects and then gradually increase them. Sometimes it's every two weeks. Sometimes it's every four weeks. Sometimes it takes even longer. But it works. And if we do it slow enough, people generally will feel better over time. And you can expect to have medication changes. And you can expect to have these medications increase gradually. Sometimes for some people, if their heart muscle stays weak, we recommend a special kind of pacemaker that watches over every heartbeat. And if your heart gets out of rhythm in a dangerous way, it can shock your heart back into rhythm again. It's called an ICD. Have a conversation with your doctor about it. The magic number to remember is an ejection fraction of less than 35%. If the heart squeezes out 35% of the blood in it with each heartbeat or less, and that would be an indicator that you could be a candidate for one of these special pacemakers that would watch over every heartbeat. If your heart is beating in a way that isn't very well synchronized, sometimes we can have those pacemakers also help resynchronize your heartbeats, and that can help the heartbeat stronger too. For patients who don't respond to those things, there are even more advanced heart failure therapies that we take care of in our clinic. I think the most important things that I would leave you with are know your disease, 
Why, why do you have congestive heart failure? Is your heart weak? Is your heart strong? Do you have heart valve problems? Do you have heart rhythm problems? Know your medications. Keep an active list and be part of the treatment plan so that you know what you're taking and you can expect medication changes on a regular basis. Limit salt and fluid and monitor your weights at home and follow a healthy diet. And probably most importantly, call your doctor if you're having symptoms. It's much easier to treat them when they start than when they've progressed to a far endpoint. So thank you very much. We have a lot of patients just like you in our clinic. Thank you.